Hey guys. So I'm on my way to go pick my daughter up from school. So you'll have to excuse me. I will not be looking at the camera in this video because I'm driving. Um, but I did just want to kind of take a moment as I got out of the house just to kind of talk about everything that's going on. Oh, the sunlight is terrible. I'm trying to listen. Um, okay, so this morning definitely did not go how I would have liked. Um, I would have been hoping to have seen a positive, but obviously that was not the case. Um, So, got another negative this morning, 13 DPO, and I know by no means is that a sealed and done deal. Um, however, it just, it feels that way. I know I've seen stories of people, you know, missing their periods and going a couple of days, and it might be 16, 18 DPO, and then they get their big fat positive. But I feel like in cases like that, and I mean, I might be wrong, but I can't help but feel like in cases like that, it's because maybe they ovulated later than they had anticipated because they weren't testing um, with ovulation strips or they weren't uh, tracking basal body temperature. So they may have thought that they ovulated a certain time or they may have been following by an app, you know, or going by previous cycles of when they ovulated and then they ovulated later. So they really weren't um, as far past ovulation as they thought they were. Um, so they're counting it as 16 or 18 DPO, but they're really not. But in my case, I know without a shadow of a doubt that I ovulated on cycle day 13. Um, just every single sign points towards that. The OPKs, um, you know, the, the cervical signs, my uh, basal body temperature chart went right along with that. I got a spike um, right following ovulation. So, and it stayed high ever since other than 6 DPO. I did have a dip and it went right back up at 7 DPO. So that made me feel like that was an implantation dip, which was very promising to me. Even though I knew, you know, that wasn't a guaranteed, it still, my chart looked really, really good. Um, so I don't know. And I, I keep trying to tell myself, don't symptom spot but you cannot help it you cannot help it and especially when you're experiencing symptoms that are not normal for you before your menstrual cycle it's just it's so hard not to say hmm this is unusual this isn't normal um and that's been the case with me a lot of these symptoms I've had are not normal um now on that note I am on different supplements this past two months um so maybe those supplements are altering hormones um I don't see how they would I don't think they're being detrimental to my hormones because they are specifically for fertility um one thing I'm taking is a supplement called procreation um and that is just like an overall fertility health and it's got a lot of stuff it's a multivitamin and it's got a lot of really good stuff in it. Um, and then I'm also taking maca root uh, capsules. So maybe just because these last two cycles have been the only two with the supplements, maybe that's why I'm experiencing these symptoms that aren't my normal. I don't know. You know, now I'm sitting here trying to explain away these symptoms um so at 13 dpo not having a positive i really really feel like i'm out this month i'm going to continue to test 
Um, just using the internet cheapies. I have one more clinical guard left and I have a shipment of, I think it's called Proven. Um, I hope I've been in frame this whole time. I probably haven't been because I'm watching the road. Um, but I have a, uh, another case of, it's called Proven, um, coming that I ordered off of Amazon that should be here tomorrow so that I'll have the test for in the morning and then my new shipment should come in so that I'll have something for Thursday. Now based on um, my normal gluteal phase I should be starting my period on Thursday um, which is in two days. Today's Tuesday so I should be starting on Thursday so I feel like if tomorrow I get up and my temperatures are still high I'm going to test however if I get up tomorrow and my temperatures have dropped then I don't think there's even any point in wasting a test um, because my temperatures usually drop right before like the day before I start um, so I guess tomorrow will tell. Um, as for symptoms today, my chest is still sore. It's not hurting like it was um, yesterday and a few days before. I'm still sore. I like it's noticeable, but it's not quite as um, sensitive. And then um, my stomach's still upset. Like I just I don't know I. I don't know what to attribute that to. Um, I mean, like I said, I, I thought it was maybe the, the multivitamins, the supplements, but even the two days that I forgot to take them, my stomach was still upset the entire time. So I don't, I don't know. Um, but other than that, I mean, I don't really feel bloated uh, like I did. I don't have any cramping, no pain. Um, normally, the day before my period, um, I start getting kind of crampy um, and I'll get lower back pains. And um, then the few hours leading up to my period, it's like extreme lower back pain. Um, it'll be really, really bad in my lower back. So, if I start getting those symptoms, I can pretty much guarantee that I'll get my period. Um, so, after I filmed my video this morning, I, uh, I pretty much broke down as soon as I turned the camera off. Just because, you know, it's just it's so disappointing to continuously go through all of this. And, you know... Unless you've watched one of my very, very first um, videos that I posted, I kind of explained that um, I think I was in denial about my infertility. Um, I know it took a long time to get pregnant with uh, my daughter, and I don't know why. Um, I never got any kind of... Um, diagnosis or anything like that with her, you know, or before her. Um, but I honestly had it in my head that it was my ex-husband um, because he was overweight. And I don't know, I just, I guess I thought the whole time that it was him because at that point, I was not overweight. Um, I am now, but at that point, I wasn't and he was. So I just, I thought it was him um, all those years. And then after I had my daughter, I was like, okay, you know, well, they say that you can get pregnant easily right after having, you know, a kid or after having a miscarriage or, you know, whatever. Um, so I'm going to go on birth control. Well, I remained on birth control for a little while and then ended up getting off of it. Um, and then, you know... Our, our relationship ended, our marriage ended, and, you know, of course, I was back on birth control, um, and I was on birth control for close to two years, about a year and a half, um, before I went back off of it, 
Um, so I do know that in the past I have been told by my doctor that I am extremely sensitive to birth control. Um, I took the depo shot at 16 and you're supposed to um, take your depo shot every three months and typically after taking a depo shot for about a year you will quit your period um, or quit having a period and it's just like it slowly tapers off it'll be you know less and less each time you go to get your um, shot it seems to you know dampen your period just a little bit until eventually you just don't have one but mine was like that right off the bat I got the shot and that was yeah I did not have a period and then once coming off the shot which I only took two um so that was the first one and then three months later I went back and got another um and then after taking that second shot I did not get a period back for close to 14 months so it was like 13 and a half months and then finally I got a period so they had told me then that you know I must be extremely sensitive to birth control so when I came off of it four years ago I did not expect to get pregnant um immediately which I was not on uh the depot shot I was just on the pill but um I, I did not expect to get pregnant immediately because of that reason I didn't expect to um have it out of my system for a long time but now like I said I, and here we are four years later and I have tracked this is my 49th cycle <laughs> last month was officially four years um, so 49 cycles I have tracked and it's exhausting and you know I'll go through sometimes and you know just some months I, I won't even think about it I'll know when stuff's happening I know when my week is I know when to expect my period um, but I don't put like a big strain on it it's just kind of you know well if it happens this month it happens you know I've got a million and one other things going on and I wish I honestly could be like that all of the time because it is so nice those months to just not worry about it and then other months it's all I think about like these past two months it has taken over my life um it's all I think about every single day um is just you know am I gonna get pregnant can I get pregnant you know and symptom spotting and you know trying to do everything right and um yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely taken over my life. So, I feel like um, if this month for sure is not it, that I'm going to still track like always next month. I mean, I'm definitely not going to stop tracking because that, that information is great to have. Um, so, I've never skipped tracking a month because I like being able to go back and say, okay, this is how many days my cycle was you know, this month, that month, and be able to accurately track for a long time. So, 49 cycles worth of information is a lot. Um, so, about talking to my husband about it, today, or today um, we went out to lunch, and, you know, I think he can sense that I'm, I'm moody and I'm not feeling well and it's not that I'm sick I just I'm, I've got all this on my mind and I'm just kind of down in the dumps and he can sense it but I think he knows um I think he's got the general idea that it's pertaining to this and I don't think he's trying to poke or prod me for information um and he keeps just asking me are you okay are you okay and I keep telling him yeah I'm fine sure I'm fine you know and I'll smile for a few minutes and then you know I'm just right back to myself and I know this is not healthy at all but I just don't want to put him through it like I really don't and I know that this is a team effort and that starting a family with him is a team effort and that he has taken over the role of father for my nine-year-old Beautifully. I mean, he is amazing with her, and he is ten times the dad that her real daddy is. And, I mean, he didn't miss a beat. He stepped right up. And I'm so blessed, like, so blessed to have him in my life. He, he just don't even realize how much I appreciate him. And I, I just know that a man like that deserves to have a child of their own. 
And I mean, and he, he beyond deserves to have a family. He just, he beyond deserves it. And, you know, if something were to happen and they tell me, you, you just can't. We've already, you know, mentioned in the past, we'll look into adoption. But until that day comes where they tell me it's just absolutely out of the question, then I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that he has a child of his own one day. And it's just, it's so frustrating because, yes, I know at 31, you know, there's still time. And I understand that. But I just, I feel like with it taking as long as it does, that if it were to take me, you know... A couple more years and then have one it'd be great but what if and I'm not even trying to get ahead of myself but just what if you know we've got a, a girl my, my nine-year-old is a little girl and what if we had another girl and he wants a son and I mean I know this sounds like I'm getting way ahead of myself but I can't help but to think you know well what if he ends up wanting two of his own. I don't think two children of your own is too much to ask. But you know what I'm saying? Like that, that's extending it another however long it takes after then. And it just, it scares me just thinking that I'm going to run out of time in my fertility before we really have a chance to accomplish having the family that we want. You know, like I don't want my fertility to be the deciding factor. I don't want everything, like, the factory just to shut down before we're, we're finished, um, with our family. <sighs> I don't know. I feel like I'm just rambling on and on and on, but it, I just, I have to get these things off my chest, and I could easily go in there and, and say, hey, listen, you know, we need to talk, and I need to get this off my chest, and, you know, but I feel like at that point, I'm just taking, like, all of this. And just shoveling it onto him. And he has so much already on him. Because he's the supporter of our family. Um, so, I mean, he already has all of that responsibility. And all of that stuff. You know, that he's already shouldering all the responsibility. And the worries and the pressure and the stress of all of that. Without me sitting here saying, hey, you know what? I know you've got a lot on you, but here you go. Here's all this too. And then me turn into a big blubbering mess. A big emotional wreck. I just, I don't want to do it to him. I just don't. So, I mean, if it happens to where I just, I explode and I can't hold it back anymore. And I end up, you know, explaining to him everything that I'm feeling. And, you know, how discouraged I am. And how, you know, how many tests I've taken. And, you know, whatever. And then that's what happens. But I'm not... I'm going to try to avoid doing that. Um, and that's another reason. He does not know about my YouTube channel. And it's because when I did my first video, I expected to never post it. I just I just needed to talk. And it, I recorded it. And I was like, you know what? I know I'm posting this because maybe I'll get some feedback. And that's what I need. I need the community. I need the support. And I want to hear from other ladies that say, hey, you know, I was in a similar boat, but it worked out. And it turned out great. And so far, oh my goodness, I, I've got one particular woman that is being amazing. She is responding back and commenting on like every video. And just kind of supporting me and I just want to let you know because I'm sure that you're going to watch this video thank you so much you have no idea how great you were you've been and how much you've helped me already um so definitely you know keep that in mind that those little comments help the little girl's about to get in the car Hey, sweetheart. Get buckled up. Okay. How was school today? Good. Awesome. Okay. Alrighty. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, I just picked my little girl up from school, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. But anyway, I will. I'm sure, I'll be back soon. Right. Bye.